Hello everyone, it's Nady, and today we'll be testing out the Lunar Butete Moonspell Volume 2 Collection. As you beautiful people know, any tiff you may have, please cast it away because this is a channel of positive energy, okay? Thank you. Oh, my little spooky sisters, how you doing today? I hope wherever you're at in the world, you're having a marvelous day so far. I myself am doing wonderful. I saw the sun for about five minutes today, and just the reminder that it exists is enough to keep me going for the day. No, honestly, I've no complaints, and I'm really excited for this. I was sent this to me by Lunar Butete, so thank you very much. They always appreciate honest feedback, which is all we give here. Sometimes it's brutal. But I'm just seeing the palette for the first time, and it's purple. If you know me, I'm a purple slut. Oh, Oh my gosh, I just love purples, I love reds, I love pinks, and this has all of that, so I'm hopeful for this. I think we've tried pretty much everything from this brand, and honestly, everything has been spectacular, so hopefully they don't break the little chain with this. It looks like this collection contains the Moon Spell Volume 2 palette, which retails for $48, then you have a liquid lipstick, which is $18, and two lip glosses, which are $17 a piece. I'm normally not a lip gloss person, I don't really care for colorful lip glosses. I'm definitely more of like a nude or clear or just neutral lip gloss. In fact, I'm wearing one of their other ones right now just because I don't have chapstick around. And I think I'm actually like at the end of this, which surprises me because I never go through any makeup before I have to throw it away. It usually expires before I can use it all. So that makes me happy. It looks like we do get another clearish one in this collection, so I'll probably just replace it. And I did also Google like red and purple looks and I found the most beautiful like red to purple halo eyes. So that's what we're gonna do today. I'm so excited. Hold on, we need our liquid energy. I don't know if it's the time of year or what, but I am just like perpetually sleepy. Does anybody else get like that? She needs to get her shit together. Oof. Anyways, let's go ahead and open these up and see what we're working with. I saw a few of the campaign shots on Instagram, but we are really going in blindly here. This is like a blind Tinder date and I hope it goes good. Ooh, okay. So here's the clearish one, which is Coven. It has the usual very cute packaging. I do like it. And the thick wand. We love it thick. Mm, and it smells like like vanilla or cake. I'm not quite sure which, but it smells nice. And then I just I love it, right? Mm, 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 I love it. These glosses aren't like the 2005 glosses where they're very heavy and thick and just kind of like sticky. They're more of like a lip oil, which is more what I like. Like I'll apply this at night and I'll wake up with hydrated and moist lips. I don't remember how long the glossy look stays, but the feeling of suppleness does last quite a while. We love a supple bitch. And then here is Bitchcraft. Ooh, I love that name. I'm not gonna put this on my lips just yet, so let's swatch it right there. Oh, okay, it does have a little bit of color. In the picture, it looked like it was almost a lipstick, like a berry tone, but it's almost like a your lips but better kind of lip gloss. I like that, okay. Oh, and it does smell like butterscotch, caramel, fuck, I don't know what. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, it tastes so good. And then last but certainly not least, we have Hollow's Eve, and I think this is the red lipstick, and their lipsticks are also very, very comfortable on the lips. I have no complaints about any of them. Oh, this isn't red, it's orange. In the picture, it looks like a... Oh, wait. Well, on there, it looks orange. In person, I swear to tits, it looks red. How odd. Okay, well, it is kind of like a dusty burnt orange. I really, really like this color. This was actually one of my first ever lip colors that I ever purchased. I think it was KVD. Mmm, it smells good. I just love that color. Let's put it right there. Oh, it is buttery. I just want to put it on popcorn. And I feel like any of the glosses that we got today would really complement it. I'm gonna give this a second to dry and then I want to put this more berry tone over it to see what it turns into. Actually, you know what? Let me quick apply it to my lips because I'm not sure that this color will go with the look that I'm wanting to do today. So hold on, let me wipe this off. And here we go. Uh, I don't have a mirror, so we'll see how it turns out. Mmm. How'd we do? Are we even? Oh, I guess I could look in my monitor. Fuck. Yeah, that looks pretty good from where I'm sitting. And this formula is very, very hydrating too. It feels like the lip glosses, but if the lip gloss is dried down, and then after it does kind of dry down, it just feels weightless. Like there's nothing on your lips. It is a banging ass formula. And then here is the berry toned gloss. We'll put that right over. I'm gonna be super gentle with this because these glosses do kind of remove the lipstick that they go over, but that's a gloss for you. Oh, Okay, it just kind of deepens it up, which I'm not mad at. I love a deep orange. I love any kind of orange lipstick. Wait, no, maybe it's making it lighter. Don't know what it did. What do you think? Did it go lighter? Did it go darker? Is it the exact same and I'm just a little bit crazy? Don't answer that last one. Yeah, I think it is really pretty. Maybe I'm wrong in thinking that this palette has reds in it. Maybe they're oranges. And if that's the case, then I will use this. Hold on. Mwah. 
See, she melts, but that's no biggie. It's as long as it's not on my teeth. I think that's pretty. Okay, moving on. Let me just wipe this off here. Today, my lips just are super dry, so I'm gonna go in with a little bit more of this gloss just over my plain lips, and you can see how it looks. Oh, that was a lot. I've got, like, post-blowjob lips now. Yeah. I like that. I would probably use that on the daily. Although, it does have a slight bluish undertone, which gives my natural lips a kind of hypothermic look, so maybe I would stick more with this. And then over a lipstick, I would use the berry one just to deepen it up a bit. Yeah, what do you think? Yes? No? Mmm, that's nice. Then, let's dive into this baby. Cute packaging. It does look exactly like a little book, just like the first edition. Very nice. That is expensive looking. We'll slide this baby out. Absolutely adorable. And here we go. Oh, shit. One of them is broken. Um, okay. Well, before I kind of tip it over the waist bin, let's take a look at this. I don't know how one broke. It arrived in, like, bubble wrap and, like, a big thick box. But, I mean, shit happens. It's not really their fault. So, this is quite pretty, and I'm happy to see that... Oh, God, it's falling out. I'm happy to see that there are reds in here. I was excited for oranges, but I love a deep, like, berry and bloody red. Those just get me going. And the one that's broken is Marie, which has kind of, like, a blue reflect in it. It's a matte with just a little bit of shimmer peppered in there. Honestly, I don't love mattes that have a little bit of reflect in them, so I probably wouldn't have used that shadow anyway, so no big loss. Hold on, I've got to tip it over the trash can, otherwise I'll be wearing this. Oh no, it is everywhere. But yeah, cute colors. I really, really like these purples. Ooh. Ooh, and I love Gillian right here too. That's kind of a unique color. It's like a pastel Barney. And I don't know if this is actually the case or if this just was a kawinky dink, but I like how you could take like each row and turn it into a separate look. And just from looking at it, it does seem like a pretty fail-safe palette. There's a lot of nice color combinations and it would kind of be difficult to fuck a look up. Of course, if anybody could, it would be me, so we'll see. But before we dive into actual swatches, Let's just do a few live ones. Let's do Luna, which does have a little bit of black in it. Hopefully that doesn't alter this too much. Oh, that's pretty. And then let's also do Myrtle. Very, very nice as well. And then let's do a matte here. We'll do Hilda. Just like Hilda Spellman. Okay, so there is that. There is... Oh, wait, I didn't have one on that finger. Okay, there's that and that. Ooh, very pretty. Just even those colors together would make a cute look. I really like this chunkier... I don't even know what that is because it's like a cross between glitter and a shimmer. A glimmer? A shitter? <gasps> a shitter. I think we've said that before. It is a shimmer glitter, aka a shitter. All right, let's go ahead and do a look and swatch this little bitch. You guys know the song. Are you ready? Swatch and ta ha ha ha. And here we have the first two rows swatched. Sorry that the shadows are a little bit darker. The black kind of got mixed in with the shimmers and it won't come out. So they don't necessarily look like how they are supposed to. But otherwise, they feel fantastic. The mattes are beautiful. Everything is creamy. I really don't have any complaints. And then here we have the second two rows swatched. And again, the black did kind of get mixed in with them. So they aren't the best looking. But as far as quality goes with the swatches, at least, they do seem pretty on par with the rest of the brand. There isn't really anything that's splotchy. Everything is laying down nicely. It's beautifully pigmented, but we won't really know until we put them on the eye. As we always say, swatches really don't mean shit, but they do look pretty when swatching. And I'm trying to remove these with a moist makeup eraser, and there really isn't that much staining. There's a tiny bit, but because this is a color palette, do expect a little bit of staining. It's really no big deal, only because anything that could stain your eyelids isn't safe, but I mean, it is. <laughs> Anyways, let's hop into our little look. I did prime my face with the Georgia Jet Clinger Marula Primer. And I might be able to get away with this shade today. It does seem a little bit light, but we'll try it. This is Uma by Sharon C. Love this stuff, but I do have a slight tan going on. Oh shit, that is very light. Hold on, what can we mix this with? Oh damn, I think I had a deeper shade. What the hell, why didn't I just use that? Oh, this brush is stinky. I don't think this foundation likes this primer. But you know what? That's okay. We're not here to review the foundation of the primer today. We're here for the eyeshadow. As long as something is on my face, I'll be happy. It couldn't be because I went in with like 18 pumps of foundation. No. And then I'm also going to take a little bit of Uma Beauty Stay Woke Concealer right underneath the eyes. Yeah, that's pretty. Set a little bit of powder right underneath the eyes to set them, bitches. And then a teeny tiny bit of Laura Mercier on the rest of the 
face. Oh my goodness, we have cake face. It's been a while since we've had that. I'm actually okay with it today, so we'll keep on chugging. To prime the eyes, I'm going in with the Gerard Cosmetics Clean Canvas. I think this is in light. My phone is currently updating, so I can't really show you the look on my screen. Maybe I can reflect it in the mirror here. I've got it on my computer if I can find the screen. Oh, there it is. Do you see that? Isn't that pretty? That's what I'm going to attempt to do. I feel like that would be pretty simple with this palette. Let's start with a little bit of this light pink Alex. Beautiful. It picks up quite nicely. There is a little bit of kickback in the pan, but it's just staying there, so I don't really care. It's not like it's blowing around everywhere. And with that, I'm going to blend it out above the crease line towards the brow. Ooh, that's very nice. It's kind of like a dusty mauve. Quite lovely, and it blends out just like pretty much every Lunar Beauty palette does very easily. We'll do the same to the other side. Literally five strokes, and she is ready to go. <laughs> Sounds like one of my dates. Cool, I like it. Next, I'm going to pack on some of this beautiful red willow. And with that, I'm actually going to go right on the lid. And I'm going to try to smoke that out with a lighter red. So we'll place that right there. Ooh, okay. That doesn't pack quite as much of a punch. Like it does obviously go there. But when it goes on my skin, it turns more into like a light pinky. I was hoping it would stay this deep cherry red. But I think because I put that pink down, it doesn't really have a ton to stick to. Which is totally fine. We will make it work. I'm just going to keep packing it on. We'll bring it pretty far up on the inner eye and pretty far out on the outer corner. It's very pretty because as I'm laying it down, it's just like softening itself up and it looks as though I blended it and I literally haven't. I've just pressed it into place. Oh wait, but if you like really dip your brush in, it does kind of stay that color. I was just kind of taking light strokes. Then right along those edges, I'm actually going to mix some Freya with a little bit of Cameron and ever so gently take it right along what I just laid down just to soften it up a little bit. Ooh, that's pretty. May have picked up a little bit too much though. I am starting to tell that I'm muddying this up very quickly. I think the colors I chose are a little bit too similar to really be able to tell the difference between them. But regardless, they are still blending out very, very nicely. Then let's go ahead and deepen her up a bit with some Queenie. Weenie? No, Queenie. And I'm just going to press that right into the eye socket and bring it from the inner eye all the way out. Ooh, that's pretty. What a lovely contrast. This is like a perfect witchy bitchy look. It is making my broom stick fly, honey. And for as many shadows as I've layered on here, everything is actually sticking down very well. There's been no patchiness with anything. Yes, this is just bewitchingly fabulous to work with. And then, normally when I do a halo eye, I go in with either white or some kind of concealer just around the middle. But I don't know that I really need to, so let's try laying things down. And if they're not sticking, I'll go in with a little bit of primer. I'm gonna take a little bit of some Macy, just on a flat brush. This is actually a Lunar Boutete brush. And I'm gonna start by packing that on the outer and the inner corner. Oh shit, she is laying down perfectly without any concealer there. In fact, I'm actually kind of glad that I didn't put concealer down because it does seem to be getting a little bit dark once it touches moisture, which is very normal for a color like this. So I'm just gonna keep packing it on right there and then ignore that little line that I have going on there. It's just to guide me for when I do liner. And then right in the center, I'm gonna go in with some Agatha and I'm just gonna tap that on with my finger right there. What a beautiful shade, even with a little bit of black that got mixed in with it. I don't even mind. I actually think it adds a little bit. Just like a touch more depth or something. I don't know. It's beautiful. And with all of the shadows that I've packed on my eyes, there is literally no fallout. Oh wait, there's a tiny bit right there, but it's just sitting on my skin. I'm pretty sure it'll dust away. But like, that's pretty good, mama. The only thing that I'm noticing is that quite a few of the shadows do want to turn a little bit darker. Like you really have to pack them on to get the true color. The purple that I put on the inner and the outer corner almost turned like this color, but then once I kept packing and packing, I was able to build it up to be that vibrant purple. But again, that is very common when it comes to these like pressed pigment type palettes. Then on the edges of that white that I just put down, let's take some Zelda. I'm just going to take that on a flat brush and we'll kind of tap it right there along the edges. And it actually is holding on the brush really well. This isn't moist or dampened or anything. Ah, oh, she is cute. Then let's finish up with a little bit of Louise on the inner and the outer corners just to help bring a little bit of that purpliness back. But the true test, does the excess fallout wipe away? Oh my gosh, yeah, okay, it actually does. For a second there, I thought maybe it would stain, but no. For this look, it looks like on the bottom, they smoked out the deeper red, so let's do that. I think I'm gonna start with a little bit of Queenie and press it right into the lash line, and then we can go lighter after that. And on the lower lash, I didn't put down any primer. This is going straight onto powdered skin, and it's still sticking down. And then right under that,
that will take a bit of willow. Yeah, again, that color does want to get quite a bit lighter for some reason. It's not unattractive, but it's certainly not quite as deep and vibrant as it is in the pan. And we are still ignoring this outer part. We'll fix that. But I want this a little bit deeper under there. So let's take some Maggie. And I'm just once again going to press this right into the lower lashes. Ooh. Oh, I like that. I don't even know if you can see this, but it added a beautiful little touch to the lower lash. I'm glad we used that. And one more little application of that light highlighter shade right in the center. And that is plenty light on the center, but this shadow is a little bit translucent. So at certain angles, it just looks like a bald patch. So I'm going to take a little bit of white highlighter and put it right over that white, just so that you don't see my bald ass bare eye. There we go. That definitely helped a little bit. Oh, wow. We are really bright now. So last thing I promise, I'm taking a little bit of Gillian right on the edges of that white. I just want a little bit more of like a neon transition. Oh yes, it's adding such a tiny minuscule amount yet so much at the same time. Let's give a quick little line. And then right on the lower lash on the outer corner, I'm going to take a little bit of black. This is by Uma Butete. And here we are with our final look. For lips, I ended up going in with Lunar Butete's Witch Bitch from last year's collection. And then I mixed it with Hollow's Eve. So it's kind of like a combo of both. But as far as the look goes, I do really like it. I used a different contour today and I don't think I like that product. So we can ignore my face. I mean, everything was super simple to use. Everything blended out really nicely. You do kind of run into the colors becoming the same eventually, but I think that's because I used like 50 of them. But I really like that there's so many different options here. Like you could create a beautiful red, a beautiful berry, a purple, a pink. This palette is just full of so many looks that you can do. I love the beautiful shitters. I love the shimmers. I didn't get a chance to use the shitter, but when I swatched it, it was pretty. I really don't have many complaints about this palette other than that kind of elephant in the room. Not quite sure why that happened. I'm sure if you end up getting a damaged one, you could just contact them and they'd probably replace it. So it's really not that big of an issue. Just be careful when you open it just in case. I think the only other issue that I had was the similarity between a few of the shadows. Like these two reds were pretty much the same. I feel like you don't really need this and this salmony shade. It would have been nice to maybe see like an even deeper, richer purple in there or even something completely different, like a green or something. Just a tiny little pop. But otherwise, I really do like this palette. When it comes to the mattes, I do recommend only going in with maybe three at most, unless you're going to be super freaking careful with it, which I never am. Maybe you're more careful than I am. But it seemed like things started to get a little bit muddled after two mattes. The shimmers, though, really don't need much to stick onto. You could just slide that bitch on your eye and it'd probably stay all day. I still have no fallout at all. Everything is held into place very well. The colors are still vibrant. Nothing's like melting off my eyelid. And everything is very comfortable. I do have a few issues with some purples. They make my eyes puff up and I have an allergic reaction, but nothing so far. Like I always say, if something could go wrong, like an allergic reaction, it would happen to me. But so far, so good. What do you think? I really like this look. If I don't end up just wiping all this off, I might switch this lip out for something a little darker. I feel like maybe a deep bloody red might go well. Oh shit, I didn't even use any of the glosses. Let's try this berry one. I was just saying how I wanted a deeper lip, so maybe this will make it a little darker. I like that. I don't know that that made it deeper, but it definitely upped the saturation of the redness. I'm kind of seeing a bit more oranginess poke through too. Everything is very comfortable. Shit. So my loves, do I recommend this? I do. Just be careful if you open it, just in case she came a little bit damaged. If the color story speaks to you, I don't think you'll be disappointed. You really do have quite a few options to choose from, and immediately I can see like 10 different looks that I could create. The lipstick, I think is a beautiful shade of burnt orange. If that's up your alley, totally grab it. The formula's banging. And the same with the lip glosses. I personally prefer the clear one just because I can wear it on no makeup makeup days. There's nothing wrong with the berry toned one. I just prefer this one more. Both of them are the same formula. They're both pretty. They're both sparkly. Do I think this is worth $49? I do, but again, I just wish we had a little bit more differentiation between the shadows because some of them are kind of repeated and I dare say a tad bit unnecessary, but I also know that they all go with this color story, so I understand it. But yeah, quality wise, I do think it's worth the price and you get a nice big ass mirror. And for the lip glosses, those are also worth the price. I've had this thing, I think this was the original gloss that came out like years ago and I'm just now getting to the end of the tube. Those to me are very much worth the price. Like all the lip products are. Oh, they're so good. So anyways, there you go. Thank you again, Lunar Butete, for sending this my way and thank you for letting me be honest. And most importantly, thank you all for being here. I love having you so much. You know the drill. If you'd like to support me and my channel just a little bit more, please feel free to join us over on Patreon. It's patreon.com slash There 
there, you get videos a day early, you get Patreon-only content, plus best part, it is cheap, fun, and fancy, just like me. And like always, please be sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell down below so that you're notified anytime I upload a new video. Don't forget my newest collection of highlighters, including Black Ice, which does change from black to white, will be available again soon at thepoplix.com. Also, my latest album, Kiss of Fame, is available everywhere online that music is sold. Thank you so much to everyone who's supporting them. Comment down below, let me know what you thought of this video. Don't forget to like and subscribe. You can follow me on Snapchat, Instagram, and Twitter at Official Nady, and you can follow me online at thepoplux.com. Thank you so much for watching. I love you all, and I will see you again soon. Bye!